Good morning. Recently, I saw a, a documentary about Robert Manry. And I was so excited when I saw that they had created this. It just came out a year or so ago. But I remember his story um, from 50 years ago. Robert Manry, uh, back in the 1950s, was actually living in Cleveland, Ohio. It turned out that he was a, a copyright editor for the Cleveland Plains Dealer. That was the name of the newspaper. He was living a fairly uh, benign, calm life. Had a small house in the suburbs. He had a steady job. He worked a night shift. He was married. He had two children. He really didn't have any wild, crazy hobbies. No, he was just kind of doing his thing. But then he went out in 1958 and he wound up buying a, a little 13 and a half foot sailboat. It was called Tinkerbell. And he bought it and he brought it home and he began to fix it up. Had to work on it for a year before it finally sailed in 1959. And for the next six years on the weekends, he would go sailing and sometimes he would take a member of the family. Couldn't take a lot on a 13 and a half foot sailboat you need to try to measure that out and understand how small that really is. But he did that for about six years. His great dream, though, was to sail across the Atlantic. He had always wanted to cross the Atlantic. And he thought if he could do that in Tinkerbell, he would become the first person in a boat that small to ever travel across the Atlantic. So on the morning of May the 24th, 1965, there was no fanfare. He was down at the docks at Falmouth, Massachusetts. And there he cast off the dock lines and set sail. As I say, he hadn't told hardly anybody. He had taken a, a leave of absence at his job, but didn't tell his boss what he was going to do. They didn't tell a lot of friends. The reason? is because he was afraid that people would try to talk him out of doing it. He was afraid that people would say, you're crazy, you're foolish, how can... He didn't want to have to deal with all that, so he just didn't tell anybody. His wife was there to see him off, and that was about it. He started sailing, it was five weeks later. He had sailed about a thousand miles. When a freighter saw him, or saw this little boat out in the ocean and turned and went to it and said, do you need help? And he said, well, I have a whole bunch of letters I'd like you to deliver for me if you would. And he passed off the mail to the freighter and the freighter took it on to the United States. And that's when his boss and friends and different people realized what he was actually doing. Five weeks now out at sea. Occasionally, people would see him, started keeping up with him. The newspaper, they thought this was an incredible story. They began to publicize it. He didn't know that. No, he would continue on for 78 days. During that time, it would be so lonely, he would start having hallucinations sometimes. His rudder broke three times. He had to keep fixing it. In the end, there were storms and he got washed overboard, but he had a rope tied around his waist and he was able to drag himself back up, get back onto the boat. No, it had not been easy. 78 days. He was getting close. His destination, Falmouth, England. He'd start in Falmouth, Massachusetts, gonna end in Falmouth, England. He thought when he arrived, he would tie up to the dock, go check into a hotel, get a warm shower, and just go to sleep. He figured the next morning he'd get up, have a good breakfast, and go to the Associated Press and see if they would be interested in buying his story. He didn't know how many people had started following his journey. And when he came pulling into Falmouth Harbor, there in England, there were hundreds of boats who'd come out. They heard he was almost there. They were ready to meet him with water cannons and horns, 50,000 people lined the docks and over on looking on the bluffs. People were there to scream and to shout and to clap. But most exciting, standing there on the dock was his wife, Virginia, and his two children. What an incredible success. 
he would wind up having great notoriety. It, it was a, a wonderful thing for him to be able to do. And you know, I, I've always found it incredibly inspiring to think, dream your dreams. And don't let other people be the naysayers who talk you out of trying and doing it because they're afraid they can make you afraid. That didn't happen to Robert Manry. But you know, also, I think he was able to do it because of his wife, Virginia. To have that person in his life who was there to encourage him, to believe in him, who didn't pour cold water on his dream, but encouraged him to dream that dream. You know, the world needs more Robert Manrys, people who are willing to cast off the dock lines for what seems like an impossible dream. But the world also needs more Virginias, people who are willing to encourage and cheer other people on. Today, I hope you'll dream your dream. And don't forget to help someone else dream their dream. It's one of the ways that you can share God's love and bring hope in this world. Have a great day.